a lot of publications uh, uh, in, in, uh, about uh, various Islamic program. He has translated uh, very easily the Quran and a few, uh, in few languages, English of course, Spanish, and uh, also any other language. Uh, there are a copy of the Quran at the outside. If anybody is interested, just grab one. Uh, and just uh, about it, about him. So inshallah, we'll have the session and Q&A at the end uh, about this program. The subject is uh, who wants to be a billionaire? Very interesting subject. Uh, personally, I'll be very happy if I know how to become a millionaire, but he's going to show tonight how to be a billionaire. So in Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. I like to have our youngsters in the front. MashaAllah. Please come forward. Youngsters are our future, so we can benefit as much as possible. You see, everywhere, all over the country, you can see our youngsters driving everything. They have a lot of energy, they take leadership, and you can make a difference. Those who are old will take the back seat. How about that? Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. I like to thank the management as well as the, our Imam for giving me the opportunity to, to come and present. It's a very beautiful masjid. Last time I came, it was that old house. Now, Alhamdulillah, have a very beautiful masjid. We need to keep this masjid very active and alive so it can benefit Muslims around the world. How about that, right? Inshallah. So today our topic is who want to be a billionaire? How many zeros are required to be a billionaire? Who can say how many zeros? Nine, right? Okay. And you can see this presentation in the YouTube also. In the future, you don't have to copy anything. You can go to the YouTube and copy the whole presentation and share with everybody around the world. As you can see, 1,000 means three zeros. And then um, million means you have six Billion means nine, and then you have trillion, which is how many? Twelve. And quadrillion means 18. Probably you have not heard about quadrillion, but today we'll, we'll, we'll have some opportunity to visit those numbers. Allah says in the Quran, as you can see, in Al Furqan, verse number 59, that who created the heavens and the earth? And all that is in between in six days. Allah created the whole universe. Today, recently, as you know, in a couple of days back, we have a new telescope, web telescope. It can see much further and clear pictures, which gives, scientists estimate, it gives the idea about the origin of the human civilization and, and back. So you can go back with time and understand how Allah created all these things. So in six days, Allah created everything. So this asteroid is called Psyche. As you can see, it is called Psyche. It is very unique in the sense that most of the planets, as you can see, if you go to Mars, any other planet, they are made of mud, rock, all kinds of materials. But this is a made out of metal. It has mostly made out of metal. It has no mud. And the strange thing is, it has a lot of gold over there, right? Gold is very precious, is it not? As you can see, if you go to South Africa, the gold is extracted. How? Because you have to drill into the mountains, about two miles, three miles deep into the, into the earth's surface, and then you collect those dirt. Eventually, you will find traces of gold, and then you process it and make it a gold piece. That's why the gold is so expensive. It takes a lot of time and energy and manpower to collect those traces of gold. That's why it is so expensive. Now, this asteroid, scientists estimate that it is, a lot of gold is there, over there. And so much gold that if you bring on the Earth, 
Every human on the earth, we have right now 7.3 billion population. If you give it away to every person equally, every person will have 100 billion. How about that? Not 1 billion, but 100 billion. It's a good thing to have, right? Will it happen? We do not know yet. We have to go there first. Like this is our dollar sign. You can see that $1, $5, $10, right? Everyone has the same size, is it not? But they are priced differently. That's why we treat differently. If it is $1, it is $1. If it is $100, it's $100. So they are all different. And that's how we can see and treat the value accordingly. Is it not how we treat? If you lose a dollar, you don't feel that bad. But if you lose $100, you feel bad, right? So we value according to its value. And we have more. You can see you have $50, $100, even $1,000. Then we have bigger than that, even million and billion dollars. See, this is to be trading value. Now it is no longer in circulation. You can't even find a $500 bill. It used to be. I have seen in my life, but not anymore. It is no longer in circulation uh, for protection, whatever it is. <laughs> I have seen 500, okay, but not any circulation because of many reasons, because people are duplicating, the printing is sophisticated, they can actually duplicate, and so many reasons for protection, uh, those things are there. But there was a time when larger bills were in circulation. The gold price, as you can see, right now it is about $1,700 to $1,800 an ounce. It is expensive, right? And these are gold bars. These are about 1,000 gram, like a brick, piece of brick. Each of them is like $80,000. Or you can go, uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky, has the largest deposit of gold owned by the US government. It's about 290 billion, Kentucky. Okay, so, so as you can see, the Kentucky has the largest gold, gold reserve by U.S. government, and the total estimated value of about 290 billion. And if you collect all the gold of the world, all over the world, if you collect all of them, the estimate is that the total value is about, how much is it? Nine trillion dollars. Still not that much. Reason I'm showing you a little later, as you can see. As you can see, Allah created the whole thing, everything in the universe. Some we see, some we don't see. Allah created everything. In fact, our scholars describe that Allah will place you in the paradise, made out of rivers, made out of um, honey, made out of uh, milk, right? We wonder how it will happen, right? We, we go to the store and buy one gallon of milk. Right? How Allah will create a river with honey, a river with milk, all these things is coming. Allah will build for you the palaces and so many things in the heaven, very expensive, by marble and so many expensive precious metals. Those things Allah will create for all of us, inshallah. And now you can see here, It is very difficult to conceive whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, and we'll be able to see those things. It is said that when people will go to paradise, they will not feel sorry for anything except the time they spend on the earth without any activity. They will say that, I wish I could do some other activity, I could do some more Islamic activity, I'd be better off today in the heaven, better Jannah. They will feel sorry because Allah will fulfill all of their needs. Whatever you could not have. You will never have everything you can dream of. Allah will fulfill your dream over there. Still, people will feel sorry for not having more. But Allah says in the Quran, as you can see, kun fayakun. 
That's how Allah created. Nothing was ex existence. Allah says, kun fayakun, and they came into existence. All the planets, all the, all the galaxies, all the, all the things in the outer space we do not even know. Allah created from nothing. Allah didn't ask the angels, okay, uh, this planet was in the wrong place, put it in the right place. There was no adjustment made. Allah says, kun fayakun, and everything came into existence, perfectly in their places, location, size, everything, perfect. And that's how you can see Allah SWT mentioned in several places, almost eight to nine places about it, that he can create anything from nothing. He's so powerful. So this is the background of that asteroid we are talking about, which is made out of gold. As you can see, it was discovered by an Italian, uh, what you call, uh, Italian scientist. First predicted in those days, they have only telescope. They could only see so much. But he was able to see that, and he, he, he named it. And he predicted it is made out of gold, silver, nickel, platinum, very precious metals. It is between Mars and Jupiter. I'm going to show you a little later, inshallah. Its size is about 10,000 square miles, like the state of Massachusetts. Very small state, right? Only 10,000 square miles. Or one-seventh of Long Island. Or one-fifth of Bangladesh, good example. Bangladesh is like 55,000. India is like more than one. Pakistan is like 300. So proportionately, as you can see, but this is very small. So NASA has a mission. It was already discovered. It is already there, and it's a matter of time to visit. So NASA has a mission in the year, this year actually, in September, October, they are going to launch a probe. That probe, will, it will take early 2026. It will take about four years to travel to that planet, to that place, and survey it for about a year. 21 months, it will go around, the, around that uh, planet, and it will take the survey. Where the most metal is, where the most gold is, where we can land, because it is very expensive, as you know. And, uh, and then, then they will have a mission. Space exploration, that is the future technology. As you can see, we are hitting technology one after the other, right? We have so many things are changing continuously, as you can see. We have a car run on gas. Very soon, we'll have car without gas, runs on battery, right? So many things will be evolving. So same way, our technology is evolving slowly. I'm going to share some of this, inshallah. But the point is, it is going to be rich in 2026, after four years, it will make survey, and then it will come back. By then, it will send most of the pictures, most of the uh, places where it can land. Right now, we have pictures showing, Hubble telescope shows where the mountain of gold is there. It is there. You can see it. But you have to go in details before we physically explore the planet. And it is said that the total estimated value is about 700 quintillion. It takes about 18 zeros to make one quintillion. So you can keep counting, right? So it will be uh, so big. And if you share with everybody on the Earth, everyone will have $100 billion. How about that? Not one billion. Like everybody dream for a one billion, right? How about 100 billion? So you'll have the opportunity. Whether it will happen or not, yes, to be seen. The world is completely different today. As you can see, we are fighting. All kinds of things are ongoing. So it will, it will have to see how it will, it will happen. So this is, the, this is the solar system. As you can see, we have Mars. We have Earth. We have Mars. NASA has a mission to Mars. Within the next 15 to 20 years, human being will be walking on the Mars. He's already, we have probes. We have digging going on. We have now a helicopter, about two pounds helicopter, because Mars air is very thin. It's about 10% of Earth air. So it has a little, little helicopter, about two pounds, 
and its, its rotor is very high speed, like 5,000 RPM. So it can float in the air, and it can do the survey and send those pictures. So we can understand what are the things are there in the Mars in different places where we have not even landed human being over there, and we have not even traveled to different places. So you can see that is the place of this planet. It is between Mars and Jupiter. Inside a belt, this is called asteroid belt, where one of the small pieces is this one. And as you can see from this picture, it has, it has a flow of gold, it has a mountain of gold, and all these things are there. It has the impact of so many other, other small, small pieces which are, which are there. Which are, this is the actual real picture of the, from Hubble telescope. Now, what is the distance? Like, if you want to go to Mars, it takes about eight months, and it takes about 220 million mile travel. So if you want to go to that psyche, which is inside that rings, it has many, many other small, small pieces, so it is very difficult and sophisticated because you don't want to heat anything. Then you'll be gone. You have to avoid the traffic and reach there so you can see it and reach there and dig it and then bring the gold, right? So Allah put inside that ring. Allah could have put in an individual, I know, plan, what you call, probe or play piece, but Allah make it so difficult so that you have to have your equipment survive from those impacts and eventually land on that planet. So it will take, it will take, it, has, it is about 350 million miles and it will take four years just to go there and come back another four years. And if you keep digging, you'll need at least a couple of months, right? You don't have to go there and come back empty-handed. Do you? So, so it is a long, lengthy process. And we have Jupiter also, as you can see, which takes about six years. Anyway, this is the, this is the picture of that planet, cross-sectional section. As you can see, it has a flow of gold flowing places, mountains, rocks, um, some are other metals like nickel, platinum. These are very, very expensive materials. Those things are also there. And so there is a future competition right now ongoing, which is called space mining. This is the future. We went to the moon. Now we are struggling. We have a competition to go to Mars. But this one, for this one, you have to have a probe. You have to travel further. You have to have a sophisticated rockets with uh, maybe nuclear power so that it can, it can be light. See, I work for NASA, so in Florida we have a shuttle, right? Everything goes up from Florida. It says that if you can save one pound not to go up, you save $50,000. If you take your rocket one pound less, it will save you $50,000. Less energy, less power to go up. So for this kind of probe, we need more sophisticated. These regular rockets will not be able to be sufficient. We have to have it like nuclear power rockets, and uh, which, is, which is much lighter, is smaller in size, and it can also land on the moon first and then go to other planets and so on. And there will be a station in the middle. And as you can see, there, are, there is a planning right now. How can you make a station in the middle? Maybe ma that is one of the reasons um, NASA wants to go to back to Mars, because NASA, Mars can, um, what you call, uh, moon can be a station. You can a station over there, it has low gravity, so you can take lighter load, and then from there you go further. Same with Mars. Mars has air, but you cannot breathe that air. It is so thin, you need the enclosed environment like the air, like, 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 in your plane, good example. If the regular air is like 15 PSI, pounds per inch square. For, for a plane, it is very light. It's about seven to eight, because it becomes lighter, it can go up, it can go faster, and it can save gas. That, that is one of the reasons. When you go to the plane, you fall asleep very quickly. That's why they feed you very good food, so you can fall asleep, and you don't realize that you are traveling at a very 50,000 or 45,000 feet above the Earth, and the pressure is very low. So anyway, this is the gold piece, as you can see. 
pure gold. Who made this gold? It did not happen by accident that a piece of gold is sitting over there around between Mars and Jupiter. Allah created those things, right? How Allah created? Allah says, kun fayakun. Be, and it came into existence in their places. Should not you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that someone is so powerful, so powerful, he can make things from nothing, anywhere. So that is the powers and authority. All the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you can see, it is displayed to realize, to understand his powers and authority, that how powerful is he. He can do anything from nothing. So there is the expanding universe. William Hubble, as you can see, he was a British, I mean, American scientist. He first predicted about the expansion of the universe. Allah says in the Quran, ad dariyat right, that particular word is called musiyun. Musiyun means something continuously rotates and moves forward. Most of the time we have, we have things moving but not going forward. But Allah says in the Quran, that particular word, that there is a continuously, things are continuously moving and rotating. Musiyun. So Stephen Hawkins, as you, as you know, he was a British, British scientist. He predicted that that is the best thing to happen for the mankind to understand how the universe is expanding continuously. What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran 1,500 years back? before even man learned how to build a telescope. So as you can see, that Allah said so many things in the Quran. We have been reading, we have been reading for 1,500 years. It is now scientists say that, yes, the universe is continuously expanding. Now we understand better about what Allah is saying in the Quran. Now I'd like to share with you about Alexander. As you know, he was born in 356 BC, before the even Jesus Christ came on the earth. He born over there, and at the age of 16, he became the ruler, king at the age of 20. And he was taught by Aristotle, all the good things or whatever it is. And he conquered many parts of the world, including India. He completely overtake those countries. He completely take all the golds, all the materials, all the silvers, all the precious things. He just take everything from every country, and he enslaved the people of those countries. As you can see, most of the part he occupied was completely enslaved by, 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 by his army, completely devastated. But at the age of 32, he had a, he, he was dead. He had infection, and there was no cure at that time. In those days, there was no cure. If you have infection, you are gone. Now, today we have cure, we can delay, right? So at the age of 32, he passed away. But before he passed away, he said three things. i like to share with all of you, because it is very important. What he's saying, he realized at the moment of his death, three things, like this. If it, if it sounds comes, I don't know whether it may not come. It will not come?
Jesse, he said three things. One is that only when I die, my body will be carried by the best doctors to show the humanity that the best doctor could not save him. Second thing is, when you carry my dead body, let my hand hanging, keep hanging, so that people can see that all the gold and jewelry, I came empty-handed on the earth, I am going also empty-handed. I could not take anything with me. And third thing is, what is the third thing? When I scatter, I scatter all the golds and, and silver and whatever precious metals I collected from those countries, put them on the street until towards my grave. So people can take whatever they want. To show the people of the earth that all these golds and silvers and whatever precious materials I collected, I could not take anything with me. I am going empty handed. So this is a lesson for, for all of us to understand that such a big ruler could not take anything with him. He's coming empty handed like we'll do the same thing. Okay, there are many things happening for the mankind in the future technology. First of all, as you can see, the precious metal demand is growing all over the world. People want more gold. And there, there is a demand, there is a space colonization. Mars, our Mars is a place where some scientists think that people can live over there. Actually, there are many people, many Americans, they want to go there, live over there. They don't want to live on the Earth. How about that? They want to go over there. Third thing is, there are many medicine which has been defined, but you cannot manufacture them on the earth. I worked on those projects. There are some diseases which has no cure, which has no, the medicine we need is defined, but you cannot manufacture those medicine on the earth. It can only be manufactured in the space where there is no, uh, what do you call, pollution. Completely, it has to be uh, all the germ free. Right now we are suffering from COVID. Those are nothing as compared to major diseases can come, which has cure, which are only ab available to manufacture in this space. A space arms race is happening. Right now, there is a possibility that you can, like we have satellites everywhere. We are transmitting, we are calling cell phones, we have a communication, uh, we share news, you can see CNN, you can do all, all kinds of communication we are doing through the internet. But a space race is competitive. You can shut down a what you call satellite, and you can be out of business on the spot. You don't need to take over the country. You can completely cripple the country. There are so many ways you can destroy your enemy. These are the new frontiers which are coming. Space commercialization. People will be traveling. Right now we are going from, from, from here to Middle East or any part of the world. Right? 10 hours, 12 hours, 20 hours. But there is a space commercialization. You can travel around the Earth. You can go to another planet. Maybe in the future, Mars is a possible place because it has air, it has water also. Uh, we need air and water for our survival. Uh, and those things are possible. Those are the possibilities. There are people uh, who, who wants to go over there. They want to go to the space. If you go about six, 62 miles from the Earth, your gravity becomes zero. Your weight becomes zero. You become weightless. So there is a commercial flight which is supposed to go above, above that level and come back to the earth. And people want to feel weightlessness. And they, the cost is about $200,000. It is already sold out. There are people who are willing to pay that price to have that experience. So there will be more not only go to the zero gravity, but also go around the Earth a couple of times and come back to the Earth. So those are future commercialization. There are many virus diseases which is going to evolve, as you can see, one after the other. And the, all the viruses are going to be deeper and deeper. It will be difficult to cure them. And uh, this is ongoing, as, as you can see. We have virus right now, like almost three years, right? It is going to deeper and deeper. We are finding new things. Border dispute. This is happening, as you can see what is happening in Ukraine. The whole country is being run over. And this is, can happen to any part of the world. 
because human being has money, has sophistication, they want to impose their will on others. So this is the trend today. The respect is eliminated, and we are becoming more arrogant, more hatred, more uh, all these things are happening am among the humanities. And it is, we are paying the price in different ways, either through the weather or uh, through uh, higher price, and so many ways we are paying the price. Artificial intelligence. Many of the things will be having artificial intelligence, which will help you. Your car will have more artificial intelligence. Your uh, medical equipment in the hospital and many places will have more sophistication. Those are things there. You will have robot in your workplace. You are tired of working eight hours, 10 hours. The robot can work 24 hours. So why company will not, why Amazon will not hire robot than you? So these are the future trend. People are looking into these things so they can uh, make more production and benefit. More drone use for travel, as you can see, is already happening. Hyperloop, that's one of the theory probably, probably heard that right now, if you want to fly from one place to another place, you have to go to the airport, go through TSA, check your baggage, go into the plane, and then you land after a couple of hours, right? So Hyperloop is something, a concept is there. You can connect from New York to, like, Los Angeles, 3,000 miles. You can go into a tunnel. It will be, like, less, less uh, what you call, air, and the whole capsule will travel very fast. In half an hour, you'll travel 3,000 miles. Why should you have to go to TSA and go to the airport and all this sophistication? You can quickly travel. All the airport may be obsolete. It, nobody wants to fly to the plane. All kinds of things are coming up because if the Hyperloop is in a reality, it is already being tested. It is being um, experimentally tested. So it is a matter of time before those things will come. So these are the future technology which in your lifetime you'll be able to face and it will either benefit you or harm you. So as you can see, as we explore the universe, it will be more clear for the mankind to understand Allah SWT. Quran will be more clear. Think about the time of the Prophet We have no problem to understand how a plane can travel in this space. How during the time of the Prophet was the companions who were able to understand the Prophet traveled seven skies and with Angel Jibrail and he went to see Arsh to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So more things will be more clear what Allah says in the Quran. In fact, there are many things in the Quran scientists say yet to be discovered. We cannot explain. There are verses in the Quran you cannot explain. The reason being those things has not been discovered yet. So sometimes our kids think that, well, why should I read Quran? It is only old stories about Nuh al -Salam, Musa al -Salam. All the old stories, it happened in the past. We don't need those stories. But the scientists say it is so advanced that there are many things yet to be discovered. That you cannot explain, especially uh, about medical, medical field. There are many things Quran says, and those has not been clearly explained because those things have been not been discovered. It is the guidance for mankind. Remember this thing. Quran is valid today. It will be valid till the last day of this world. It is supposed to guide us to benefit mankind about the creator, how he created, what is his mission, why he created us, why he sent us to the earth, uh, what we are supposed to do, all these things. It will be more clear. So our life in this world is very short, like maximum 120 years. We have to go. Nobody can stay here, no matter where you go. No matter where you go to Mars or anywhere. Death will come to you, all of us, right? So that is going to happen. And the day of judgment is 50,000 years. One day, the sun will come down, earth will be flat, will all rise, will have to give account to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That day is 50,000 years. And after the accounting, judgment will be made on you, right? Whether it is good or bad. Whatever you did on the earth, 
or that it is very small, very small, microscopic, like an atom, very small deed, good or bad, you're accountable. And it will be decided about heaven and hell, people will go. So we should, if we are smart, we should prepare for that eternal journey. When you have to take the journey, why not you prepare ourselves? There will be no second chance. It will never happen. There will be people who will be say, saying in the Day of Judgment, oh Allah, send me back. I made a mistake. I didn't know that. I was just doing whatever I wanted to do. But send me back, I will do everything perfectly. Everything as you want. And it will be said, no, nobody will be able to come back and do it. And that should be our priority. Because we have to go anyway, so why not we prepare ourselves? We have to prepare right now. No delay. Stop priority. And if you want to be very rich, as I said, we started all to be billionaire, right? Here is the process I'm going to share with you. How to be a billionaire in the life hereafter. In this world, you can try, right? You can try. Some are billionaire. Some are not, but life goes on. But life hereafter will, will be having, facing the consequences forever, whether it is good or bad. So our mission should be whether I became million, billionaire or millionaire here, but I want to be very rich over there forever so I can have a very good life over there forever. That should be our mission. So I like to share with you because, as you can see, our children sometimes get confused because we have so many things are said in the Quran and Hadith. They read the dua, read that dua, 33 times here, 33 times here, uh, take two rakat nafal. So many things are said in the Quran and Hadith, is it not? Sometimes we want to do certain minimum. Okay, I want to do minimum and then get it over with it. I don't have time, I am busy, uh, I cannot focus. Our children are not ready. They want to find the escape. So I sorted out three things. You just do three things, and it will make you very successful in the life hereafter. How about that? You cannot do many things, right? But at least try to focus on these three things. That is my request to all of you, that at least focus these three things. These are highly paid, highly rewarded act. Why not we do it smart way? That is, uh, that's what I'm proposing to all of you. Number one, deal. Convert your sins into good deeds. How beautiful. Allah says in the Quran, as you can see in Furqan, verse number 70, look at it. It is not Hadith, it is from the Quran. Allah says in this verse that if you repent, we can do repenting, right? And if you believe, we believe, and if you do good deeds. These are the three conditions Allah says in this verse. What will happen? Allah says, I am going to change your sins into good deeds. Most of the time we ask Allah that, oh Allah, please forgive me. Forgive my sins. Allah says, okay, I, I forgive you. But this verse is saying, Allah will exchange your sins into good deeds. If you have 1,000 sins, you can ask Allah to forgive you. So you get rid of 1,000 sins. But this verse is saying you can convert. You are asking Allah to convert that sins into good deeds. So that 1,000 sins will be 1,000 good deeds. You are asking Allah SWT to do halfway. Ask him to do full things, full throttle. Like I work for shuttle. They have a call for full shuttle. When shuttle goes up to a certain height, then it goes full blast with 100% efficiency. Initially, it cannot go because it is a lot of resistance from the air on the ground. But once it reaches to about 50 to 60 miles, then it goes full blast. Same way, Allah SWT saying that if you do these three things and you ask Allah SWT to convert, Allah will convert. So you can be seen free right now. Do, do not do halfway. Do not ask Allah to do, deliver half things. Ask Allah to convert your sins into good deeds. What will happen? Your sins will be good deeds. And your negative asset will be positive asset. How about that? 
You have a debt. Who wants to be debt free? This is the debt free. You will not have any sins anymore. You are sin free like a newborn child. Allah says in this Quran. So convert your sins into good deeds. That way your account is always clean. Your account is zero sins. We all can do that, right? So this is the easy way to clean your account and become debt free, sin free. Inshallah we'll do that. Or you're not interested. <laughs> okay, inshallah we'll do that. The second thing is, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says something very important. There are many things he said. This is one of the place that nothing will be heavier on the scale. In on the scale, the, everything will be measured. On the right side, you have good deeds. On the left side, you have bad deeds. They will be measured. If you have more good deeds, then it will take you to the to the heaven. If your sins is more, you go for punishment into the hell. But this verse, this hadith says, nothing would be heavier on the scale than what? Inshallah, we'll do that if we, if we share with you. Okay. Good manners. Narrated by Abu Dawud. Your good manners is way more than any other good deeds. So, Pick the best action. That's what I'm showing you. First action is convert everything into positive territory. Second thing is convert the, the action in such a way so that all of your good deeds are heavier, good manners. Does it cost you to do good manners? Right? If you want to pray, you have to stand. If you want to read Quran, you have to read page after page. But good manners... It can be to anybody, with your wife, with your family, with your children, with your neighbors, with the brothers in the masjid, anywhere. Show good manners. I gave you an example. A person is very religious. He is praying tahajjud, he is reading Quran, he is always crying Allah, all kinds of things he is doing. Alhamdulillah, may Allah forgive his sins and bless him. Another person, he is not doing all these things. Only good manners, smiling. The Prophet ﷺ has the best appearance. Why? Narrated by Tirmizi that he used to smile so much that people here, that Sahabi said, I have never seen anyone like him. So good manners, if you can do that, it doesn't cost you anything, but it will be heaviest on the scale in the Day of Judgment. How about that? So another person, as I said, he is not very religious, but he has good manners with his friends, neighbors, colleagues, family, children. He will be ahead of the game. His scale will be heavier than the other person who was busy with so many other things, so many activities. So this is the very heaviest good deed for all of us. Inshallah, we'll do that. And the third thing is, third thing I want to share with you, that inshallah, all of us will go to paradise. A time will come that some will go to higher paradise like Jannatul Firdos, who you all wish... Ask Allah that, oh Allah, give me the best one, right? We can ask. But you may get whatever Allah destined for you based on your activities, whatever you can come up with, whatever you can think about it. But you can also have the best opportunity to be a neighbor of the Prophet. How about that? We have not seen him. We'll see him in the Day of Judgment. He's going to plead for all of us. He's going to give the water from Hawza Kausar. That water is so, so delicious. Until you enter paradise, you'll never feel thirsty. So how about becoming his neighbor? It's so beautiful. You don't have to make an appointment. You can visit him. He's just next door. He's just next door. You can visit him. You can talk with him. You can chat with him. Like our kids wants to chat with your strangers. So to chat with our Prophet ﷺ. Plan for it. That should be our focus. And if you do that, you can do it forever. How about that? Prophet ﷺ showed with his two fingers like this, that my heaven and his heaven, that person's heaven will be side by side. No gaps. You don't, need, you don't have a fence. You'll just visit him anytime you want. How about that? It's so beautiful, right? That is the best thing. One sahabi, he was a very poor sahabi, very poor. He used to stay in the masjid. He was homeless, basically. He has no relatives. 
He used to stay in the masjid, Prophet's masjid. He used to pray and uh, eat whatever he could find. So Prophet was praying one night and he saw that Sahabi, his condition. And he was, Prophet was in a very good mood on that night. He asked him that, okay, you tell me what you want from Allah. I'll make dua right now for you. So that's how we think about it. What would happen to all of us? What, what would you ask Allah? If your prophet says, I'll make dua for you, whatever you, you want, I'll, I'll ask Allah right now. You know, he was so smart. What he asked, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I only want to live next to your heaven forever. That is the only thing I want. I don't want anything else. I don't want money, position, power, nothing. I want in the heaven like your neighbor next door. The Prophet ﷺ remarked that, okay, I'll make dua for you. You help me in my dua with more prostration, make more sajda, so that Allah ﷻ will accept my dua. So these are the three things. Who is going to be his neighbor? Number one is bring up an orphan. So beautiful. If you can bring up an orphan, you qualify to be his neighbor. If you look around the Muslims, you look around your relatives, there are many orphans. We have orphans around the world. We have refugees from Syria, from uh, Af Afghanistan, from uh, Kashmir, Palestine, so many places. Take care of an orphan. Somalia and so many places. Take care of an orphan. If every Muslim take care of an orphan, there will be no orphan in the earth. And you can be his neighbor. How about that? Find your relatives. Anyone orphan? Support him. Support organization. This, there are some organizations, they, they take care of orphans. And they are, many times, they, they have a very, very bad situation. So support those organizations. Invest your, your, your resources in those places so that the orphans can have a better life tomorrow. Inshallah, and you will be able to be the neighbor of the Prophet. And also, you should try to make salam as much as possible. You'll be closer to him in the Day of Judgment. And Islamic activity. Many activities Prophet ﷺ did, right? He struggled, he shed his blood, he migrated, he suffered, he, he starved. He all these sufferings, what, what is the reason? To establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Established Islam. So today we have all kinds of distortion, misuse, bad publicity. They are making cartoon about the Prophet. So many ways they are distorting facts. People are making all kinds of things, misinformation. So try to do something about those, that activities. Propagate Islam correctly, and you can qualify to be his neighbor. So those, these, are the, these are the three things, as I mentioned. Focus on those three things, inshallah, you'll be ahead of other people. I like to share with you that Allah says in the Quran, Anything good you do, even very small, like an atom, it is priceless. As compared to on the left side, you can see, if you take a silver, it's like $28 an ounce. Platinum, $1,200 an ounce. Gold is $1,900 an ounce, right? People do not know, palladium is $2,800 an ounce. How about that? Diamond is $5,000 a carat, right? It's more expensive. Have you heard about rhodium? Anybody heard about rhodium? This is the most expensive material, 28,000. It's 10 times more expensive than gold. Gold is not expensive. People have misinformation. It is your brain washed by advertisement. <laughs> this rhodium is used in your car, catalytic converter. It has a high quality to collect what you call resist corrosion. It is used in, in jewelries. Gold jewelries have radium traces. So it collect, it slow down the corrosion. Most expensive. But even if you have the most expensive material, still in the eye of Allah SWT, one atom of good deeds is worth more than anything else. We should know about it. So these are the summary of our activities. Number, number, number one is convert your sins into good deeds. 
Okay, you'll be debt free. Who doesn't want to be debt free? Everybody, right? We all have loans and all kinds of things, commitments, so you can be debt free. Best manners, it doesn't cost you anything, but it, it is very heavy on the scale. You can be the neighbor of the prophet, the best neighbor. Number four is highly paid work. Highly, we all look for highly paid job, right, is it not? Whatever job you have, you're not happy, you want to get a better job, better paying job. The highest paid is, is the work of dawah. Engage yourself in dawah, spreading Islam. This is such a beautiful marjid. This should be the center for dawah for the whole North America. Islam should spread from here to every part of the world. People are misinformed. They do not know what Islam stands for. We have a group, they do street dawah. They have different places on the table in shopping malls and places. People come and want to know about Islam and they take shahada. I work with those organizations. You can also join uh, in the jail. We supply Quran in the jail. So those are active activities we can share all of us. Help a Muslim worldwide. Muslims' condition is not very good around the world, as you can see. So get engaged. Get active. Those are highly paid jobs, as you can see. So these are the five things I all of ask you to, to inshallah, to try. Focus yourself on these five things. If you want to do more, fine, alhamdulillah. But priority should be on these five things. And these are some of the activities we do. Is we send to the jail across the country. If you want to join with us, you can participate. We have a table, sign up booth. Inshallah, you can join. We have a Quran, simple Quran, in the market, printed in Turkey. We distribute to the jails across the country. You can join also. Uh, we continuously get letters from, from Muslims. In Texas, you'll be surprised. In Texas, one of the largest state, it has 82 correctional centers. Out of 82 correctional centers, on an average, between 2,500 to 3,000 Muslims. They became Muslim in the jail. And they are waiting to come out. They are hardcore criminals. They, now they become Muslim. They are praying. They want a Quran. They write to us. They say, send me a Quran. Send me a book. How can I recite Surah Fatiha? How can I pray? All these things. You can participate in those activities, and it will be very rewarding for all of us. And we have three Quran. One is English. One is Spanish. I have more need for a Spanish Quran than English Quran right now. There are more Spanish population from Miami to San Diego. All the southern belt, we have a largest percentage of population are Spanish speaking. In fact, in the year 2040, there will be majority in this country. So we have a lot of requests for a Spanish Quran. So we supply them a Spanish Quran or French Quran. So these are some of the places. We have organization 51C3. You can get information from our table and participate. Jazakallah khair, these are our contact number. And be engaged, be active. Don't keep looking, just get engaged. Whatever you can, do something about it. Those three things you should do, and get involved in dawah and spread Islam as much as you can. Each, all of us should be able to take initiative and do something about it. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair for your time, Inshallah. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer, Inshallah. Sure. I'm, I'm sure that is, uh, I think the way I understand it has those, the belt where this particular piece is located, it is very difficult to reach there. You don't want to hit anything. Okay. When you go, free, yeah, slow down and go maneuver areas, don't hit anything, because if you hit, you are gone. Yeah. Your mission is gone. You don't want to be dead after four years. <laughs> so that is one of the reasons it takes longer time to reach there. And probably Allah has a hikmat also. He could have put that planet like, a, like Earth, but he put in the middle of those little, little pieces. So, so you, you realize the value. <laughs> that may be reason. I, I do not know exactly, but I think one of the reasons scientists say because it is in a difficult location. Isn't it that currently NASA has no plans to bring anything back or anything to explore and study? Is, is no, we have, no, we have in Houston, Johnson Space Center, I have seen pieces from like um, rocks from the moon.
Oh, they, they say a lot of political things. As you can see, the world is so, so sophisticated. You know, people want to, one country capture another country. All things are going on. You think, is, is it possible that we bring all the gold over there and are so naive, we give it away to everybody? Everybody will be rich. It will happen. I like to see that in my lifetime, if it happens. <laughs> but it, it may not happen. That's what I'm saying. What the Sheikh says, it may have to. It will be so much competition right now. Space exploration is the fastest growing area besides space commercialization. Commercialization is falling back. You say, why are you picking on peanuts when you have a diamond waiting a little further? So those things are coming, constantly changing the scope of uh, what you call priorities for mankind. We used to have, like two, three years back, space commercialization was very significant. Uh, what you call, um, Amazon wants to go, you know, many other countries wants, NASA wants to go, India wants to go, China wants to go. Now that it is in the back burner. He said, no, it is not, no longer there. Why, why should I waste money and driving people around the earth? You get uh, peanuts. If you go to those, that planet, you can get a mountain of gold. So the mission is changing, and people are uh, struggling and striving to improve their technology so they can go quicker and faster and live over there. So that is, that is the relative term. NASA has a mission they declared about two, three years back that they want to send a probe because they send probe to many planets. So in the same way, they want to send a probe to that planet if there is a gold. Gold is there, actually, whether if it is possible to extract and uh, bring some pieces, and then it may be a good thing for, uh, for NASA. It may pay off. Any other question? Yes. Uh, just on the similar line with the my presentation, thank you very much for this very knowledgeable and interesting presentation from you. Uh, on this, uh, the latest thing that you mentioned about the Psyche asteroid, which is you know, so many miles away, and <clears throat> the information you gave was based on the Hubble telescope. But do you have any update on the latest that has been released on the Webb Space uh, 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 Telescope last week? Did they give any update on this asteroid, more information? Because they are about 100 times better pictures now. Yeah, yeah, you are right. You are right. This web, web telescope web is telescope, much, which much... Last week it was out. ...much uh, sharper, and it can go further. Yeah. So it is possible you can have a better, better uh, picture, better idea about this, this psyche. Uh, so it may, it may change the whole scope of travel, all these things. But it is yet to be... Because it just, they, they just found out, they just have new pictures. So it may take a while before they find out more. Public, uh, yeah. Yes. It's a good question. <clears throat> Any other question? Uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I just want to update that uh, Brother Hai will be in the community for the weekend. So he has programmed tomorrow at uh, ICRR after Fajr, Khatara, then at 10.30 at NAMCC for the school children. In the evening, they have, he has another program at NAMCC, and sun, Sunday morning here, he's coming back for Qatar. And uh, he leaves by Sunday about noontime, inshallah. So those who are interested, please attend one of those programs, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for your time, inshallah. So we have a table with information. You can get the information, get engaged, join with us and be active, and uh, Allah will reward all of you, inshallah, for your time, for your efforts, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa biyondi kashwadu wa la ilaha illa anta astagfiru kwa atu bilai. That's all I'm going to say. Sheikh, you want to take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> Sheikh wants to take a picture. <laughs>